Welcome to another weekly check-in video. So this is week nine, although we are currently on chapter eight. Uh, we were doing great at keeping all of those numbers together um, until the first test week. Um, so in this video, there's a couple of key things that I wanna make sure we cover. So first of all, the one that's bolded here, lab five being at home instead of on campus, that is the majority of what the written announcement that goes along with this um, update video covers. So please make sure that you read through that um, posted announcement on Blackboard as well as watching the rest of this video. I also want to cover some important dates to make sure that we're kind of keeping track of where the rest of the semester kind of is. I want to comment on some mental health services, um, just reminders of things I have mentioned in previous videos, and then talk a little bit more about example problems and how we should be using those, uh, and a couple of comments about the final exam that I think need to be on our radar, even though it's comments that are directly from the syllabus. All right, so lab five is going to be done at home and not on campus. There's a couple of different factors that went into this decision and um, the posted announcement on Blackboard kind of goes through most of those factors. It was kind of a lot of different things that it was just the, the safest and best decision is just to put this um, at home instead of on campus. This would be called a dry lab, but in physics, everything's kind of um, dry. But in a chemistry um, course, this would be considered a dry lab, and, and those have been happening all this semester um, in our department as well. So the five-point handout, which covers chapter nine ideas, and the full ten-point lab activity that covers chapter eight ideas are both going to be done at home. We will post information, all of the information you need, the handouts, video describing the lab, and video needed to take measurements, uh, on Thursday of this week, and everything will be turned in at test two. So those two statements are true whether you're normally in lab group A or normally in lab group B. Please be sure to read the written announcement for all of the details. Um, this is just the kind of core idea that I need to make sure that we hear about, and then you can go in and look for more details and ask questions to Professor Siebelek if you have concerns or um, just want clarification about how that lab is going to go. So some important dates that um, are partially from our course schedule and partially from the institution schedule, um, full GRCC understanding. So our test will take place on campus November 11th, 12th, or 13th. So same idea as test one. You are attending with the specific lab day that you normally come on to campus for, whether that's Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. And no matter if you're lab group A or lab group B, test two is happening in that specific week. What is really important for us to point out though, is that the GRCC withdrawal deadline, the last day to withdraw with a W, um, instead of keeping the score that you're currently at, is on November 14th. There is no way for us to have all 150 tests graded in that short turnaround time. And so what I need us to be aware of is that if test one did not go very um, well for you compared to what you know you're capable of, and after walking out of test two, you're sure that things still weren't quite clicking, it may be worth sitting down to have a conversation with us that week so you can decide if a withdrawal is the right, um, the right move for you. It is also after that point that um, you will basically be taking the grade um, given, and there's no drop, 14-day um, drop period either. Also on our radar, I want to make sure we understand that Thanksgiving um, is the Thursday that's in the week of November 23rd. That's a Monday to November 28th. That's a Saturday. GRCC itself is often open Monday or Monday and Tuesday of that week. But Physics 125, our course, has nothing scheduled for that entire week. So if you're trying to figure out your plans of what needs to happen before um, you kind of set aside work for a couple of days, uh, just be aware that we have nothing scheduled for that week specifically, but it is going to be really essential that you don't fully ignore the ideas of physics for an entire week, because then you'll lose a lot of the understanding that you've built you don't have to spend all day, every day, that whole week working on physics, but maybe set aside 20 to 30 minutes each of those days 
to just try a couple of practice problems as you continue to prepare for the final exam. Now, I have mentioned mental health um, services in weekly check-in videos before, and I just really want to make sure that we have access to this information. The Counseling Services, Counseling and Career Development Office, has several amazing people working there that um, usually have to take calls by appointment, um, but they have set aside time during the week for students with urgent needs to call in that same number. So those call-in hours are typically between 8 a.m. and 6.30 p.m. on Mondays and Wednesdays and 8 a.m. until 5 p.m. on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. And so um, that's a chance that if you, first of all, aren't quite sure how to set up an appointment, although please do click the link in the slides here um, or go to that link in the slides here, grcc.edu slash counseling career development. But if you have something urgent come up that you really need to talk to somebody about, um, that number will be useful to you um, if it's during the regular weekday. It's also worth making sure we understand that if there is an immediate threat to the health or safety of students or others on campus, we have a number for GRCC police. And if there is an immediate threat um, to the health or safety of anyone off campus, uh, 911 is there for those kinds of immediate emergencies. So the last two topics here that I wanna cover are back to our course specifically. So first of all, example problems. I wanna make sure we understand that there are positives and negatives to taking courses online. And I'm sure that we are really good at finding the negatives, especially if we've not taken online classes before. But one of the really strong positives here is that the example problems that students normally see one time in class on the board are now available for you to re-watch as often as you need to, especially if you've found a particular topic that you really are struggling with. It's worth noting that when we do these problems on the board in class, often we might make small math errors. Um, hitting the wrong button on our calculator is one of the most common things or adding two numbers together in our head and doing it a little bit wrong. And in class, it's quite easy. Someone raises their, their hand and they're like, Professor Woolsey, did you mean to add those two numbers um, to this correct answer instead? And I'd be like, you are absolutely right. Thank you for catching that. It is going to be very likely that small math errors, not big physics mistakes, I promise I understand the physics, but small math errors every single human makes because we're not perfect, and especially when we're all under stress, um, I mentioned mental health in the previous slide, especially when we're under stress, it is much more easy, um, it is much easier to make mistakes. And I still wanna catch those and fix them. So if you think there's a math error in a posted example problem video or in problem set solutions, please let me know right away, I can fix it. I am very thankful to the handful of students that have already caught things along the way this semester. Um, one of the most recent ones was um, example 8D for this week. Yesterday, um, someone was able to help me catch and fix um, an error where I just forgot a decimal place in one spot right at the end. So example problems are extremely useful to study from, just like the problem sets. I've also had to correct um, mistakes on the problem set solutions. Again, always small math errors, never issues with the setup. But what I do want us to recognize is that we should also be using example problems alongside problem sets when we're preparing for test two and for the final exam. Students already feel like they're struggling with the amount of material that we assign for points in this class. It is not possible to, for us to fit every single situation onto the problem sets. And so for example, topics like the two-dimensional circles from chapter six, so the pendulum at an angle that's going around in a flat circle, that is something that didn't get a chance to, um, to be put onto the problem set, but we still have that example video that we can look back at and practice with and fully understand. So make sure that you aren't um, setting those aside and only watching them once, especially if it's topics that you felt not so confident about the first time through, or problem types that you've seen on the problem set and made mistakes and might need to go back to those videos to make sure that you're kind of hearing my discussion of why we do each step. Because physics is absolutely essential for us to understand the why and not just the how. The last note so that 
we don't have any um, uncomfortable surprises. This is directly from the syllabus, word for word. If our final exam is on campus, so the same format as our two tests, then we have the policy of overwriting it, which we have described in a previous lecture video. I need us to start to have on our horizon that it is possible that GRCC goes fully online at some point within this semester. If that happens, this course will continue to occur. It will occur fully online. But the one big change that we need to be aware of if that happens is that the final exam cannot overwrite a test score if it's an online test. There's a lot of things that um, we, we want to keep the same and kind of keep as coherent as possible, but that's one policy that we built into this syllabus at the very, very beginning of the semester, before the semester started, with the understanding that this overwrite policy, which we usually have for our on-campus classes, is only going to work if the format of all of the tests is the same. And that won't be true if our final exam is put on online. If you have any questions or concerns, please talk to us. Please be sure to read the syllabus first. It's been posted um, since the very start of the semester. And we continue to look forward to working with you to make this semester as successful as possible under the circumstances we all find ourselves under. Thank you for listening.